This is the first video in a two-part series aimed at providing guidance in creating a CFD-ready, viscous, multi-block structured mesh for a single passage of a high stagger angle axial rotor geometry. The pointwise file used in this tutorial is available online, so feel free to download it and follow along. At this point, it's important for me to note that while these videos do provide step-by-step -step instructions, it's assumed that you have a basic knowledge of the pointwise workflow, having gone through the pointwise supply tutorials to gain familiarity with the tools that will be used. Before I get started, I'd like to show you what we'll be meshing, just to kind of give you an idea as to the topology I chose to use for this geometry. So here you can see the final grid for the axial rotor. The reason I want to show you the final grid and topology I use for this geometry is because a lot of the decisions I'll be making in this video, and early in the next video, assume that we have a basic idea of the topology we'd like to utilize beforehand. In this simplified image, which I should point out is available online for you to download for your reference, I basically outline the appropriate topology for this type of rotor blade, more specifically a high stagger angle axial rotor. You'll notice I've chosen to go with a blade center topology. In general this tends to eliminate some solver stability issues that would generally arise had I chosen to use a passage center topology, where the periodic surfaces would actually intersect critical areas like the leading edge of the blade where high gradients in the flow variables are experienced. So by moving the periodic surfaces away from the geometry, I'm actually able to reduce the effect of the boundary on important flow physics I'd like to capture. Also to improve the robustness and accuracy of the simulation, I've decided to go with a one-to-one -one periodic connection, meaning that the periodic boundaries on either side of the blade are one-to-one -one point matched. Now I've mentioned this stagger angle several times, and the question to ask is, why does a high stagger angle provide such a challenge during the mesh generation process? Well, one of the major reasons and really the driving factor in this choice of topology is that the stagger angle, as the stagger angle gets higher, the mesh tends to really degrade severely at the trailing edge, especially as the outlet boundary becomes closer and closer to the blade, a condition that's very typical of axial flow devices. And the reason for this is, is that the grid lines have to turn sharply to quickly align themselves in the axial direction before meeting the outlet. So if we look at a more general topology for this type of turbine blade, you can see that in the passage these, these cells are highly skewed because these grid lines have to quickly turn to align themselves uh, in the axial direction before meeting the outlet and like I said it, it really results in a lot of skewed cells in the passage. So you can see this hard turn near the outlet on the periodic boundaries right here and this hard break actually kind of implicitly changes the mesh coordinate direction and requires that some special care be taken in avoiding generating highly skewed cells. And the way I've chosen to handle this is by actually running a grid line from this hard break in the periodic surface on the suction side of the blade all the way down to the body so I have a little bit more control in that region of the mesh. And the position where this connector meets the blade is set by the decision to split this 180 degree kind of arc into the roughly three 60 degree segments. And this is how this connector is set that runs all the way to the boundary and these two domains are simply just the byproduct of this decision. So for the blocking on the pressure side of the blade, rather than running a connector from the hard angle in the periodic surface, I chose to run a connector from the trailing edge back to the periodic surface such that I can open up this interior angle to prevent the creation of degenerate cells that would have been generated due to the high stagger angle. I mean you could just imagine the highly skewed cells that would be generated in this region due to this angle and that's what we're really trying to prevent. So if I just go back take a look at this uh, more general topology you can see that because of that high stagger angle we have highly skewed cells over here on the the pressure side of the blade very similar to the, those found on the suction side of the blade. Now the location where this connector intersects the periodic surface is based solely on opening up this interior solid angle in that region. And because of our choice to maintain a point-to-point -point periodicity, this location will dictate the location of the connector up here on the suction side of the blade. The leading edge is pretty straightforward. I just elected to run some connectors from the leading edge of the blade all the way to the inlet, uh, basically just matching the periodic surface. So actually getting back to our grid, you can see what this topology results in. This is a picture of the domains on the shroud of the geometry. And just note the high cell quality that this topology has been able to provide. What this really demonstrates is complete customization and complete control of your grids when using pointwise. 
Whether you need to conduct a grid dependency study or an achieve an appropriate Y plus for your simulation, once you've put in the effort to define your topology, PointWise makes it extremely easy to go back and adjust your mesh accordingly in just a few mouse clicks. Again, this was just a sneak preview of what you'll be able to generate by the end of these two videos, and kind of give you an idea as to why I'm making some of the decisions I'll make throughout the mesh generation process. In this first video, I'll be showing you how to create the periodic surface domains, how to construct the surface mesh for the rotor, and how to quickly generate a boundary layer grid for the rotor using PointWise's normal hyperbolic extrusion tool. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is I'll go to the Defaults tab, and I'll change the connector dimension default to 61. This will prevent me from having to manually specify the dimension of every connector I create, and it'll also allow me to create domains on database entities automatically, as the connectors will be pre-dimensioned beforehand. Next, I'll select the database mask and select the database entities of the periodic surface and click Domains on Database Entities up here in the toolbar. This will automatically create structured domains on the periodic surface. I'll select these domains, go to Create, Periodic, Rotate. I'll select Point and Direction, enter 000, and we're going to rotate about the x-axis, an angle of 8.78 degrees, because there are 41 blades in this axial rotor geometry. So now I have a periodic copy. So anything I do to the original periodic domains will automatically be applied to the periodic copy, and vice versa. So for instance, if I change the dimension of these four connectors to 11 points up here in the toolbar, they'll automatically be changed on the periodic copy. Same goes the other way. If I select the connectors on the periodic copy and change the dimension of these to 51, the dimensional change on the original domain. Next, I'll select the spacing constraint and select the spacings near the hub and the shroud geometry. And I'll change the spacing here to 1e to the negative 4 to provide some viscous resolution. Now this completes the periodic domain creation. Next, I'll select the database mask and select the services of our, our blade and click domains on database entities. I'll come and select all the domains and just change the display type to hidden line so it's easier to see. I'm going to go and redimension the connectors on the pressure side of the blade. So I'll select them and enter 51 in the toolbar. I'll now select the connectors on the suction side of the blade and change their dimension to 89. I'll come and select the spacing constraints at the leading and trailing edge of the blade as well as the hub and the shroud and change the spacing to 1e e to the negative 4. Zooming in you can see that changing these spacing provided better resolution of the geometry at the leading and trailing edge of the blade and provided some viscous resolution for the hub and the shroud. Now that that's complete I can select the domains of the turbine blade, go to create, Extrude, Normal, go to the Boundary Conditions tab and select the boundaries of the turbine blade and change type to Database Constrained. I'll select the hub and the shroud geometry and set Boundary Condition. Therefore, when the boundary layer is extruded, it will remain constrained to the hub and the shroud geometry. I'll change the attributes, the step size, I'll set the initial step size to 1e e to the negative 4 with a growth rate of 1.1. At this point, it's probably important to mention that depending on what turbulence model you plan on using, you may either want to resolve a viscous sublayer or use wall functions, and this choice will dictate the value you specify for the initial step height. If you want to resolve the flow, an initial step height that gives you a Y plus around 1 should be selected, along with a growth rate between 1.1 and 1.2. This will ensure that an appropriate number of points will be generated within the boundary layer region. If the wall function approach is necessary, perhaps to reduce the cell count, an initial delta S should be selected to give you a Y plus between 30 and 300, along with a growth rate of no greater than 1.2. So now that's selected, I'll go to the smoothing parameters, and I'll just turn down the volume smoothing a little bit. A low value for volume smoothing will force the extrusion to maintain the initial front shape as it moves away from the turbine blade, whereas a larger value will attempt to equalize the shape of the cells on the front, resulting in the boundary of the extrusion taking an irregular shape. A larger value for volume smoothing is more often used when doing far field extrusions. 
next, go to the Run tab, and I'm going to enter in 15 steps. I'll reorient the display so it's a little bit easier to see the extrusion. And you can see the extrusion marching away from the turbine blade geometry. So I chose to extrude the boundary layer only 15 steps, so I still have room in the passage to construct the topology that I'll use to build the hub and shroud domains and eventually construct the final blocks. So you can see the final layer of the extrusion is pretty close to the outlet domain, so 15 steps is good enough. Zoom in here to the leading edge and you can see the, the cells marching away from the turbine blade. So in this video, I went through the creation of periodic surface domains and demonstrated how changing the dimension or spacing of the original domains will be reflected in those of the periodic copy or vice versa. Next, I created surface domains for the turbine blade and used them to generate a database constrained boundary layer grid using Pointwise's normal hyperbolic extrusion tool. In the next video, I'll define the topology for the blade passage and construct the volume grid.